So I'm going to continue the series, and we're on part five, and it's called Imagining is Fun, because it is. It doesn't have to be this thing that Neville always said, that you don't want it to be the where you're popping a blood vessel to imagine what you want, and you don't want to be trying so hard to change your external. And one day, you know, you're going to see that it's about changing the inside, and you're going to find out how easy it is to change your inside. It's much easier than you think. It's because... You're the one creating all those punishments and all those ideas and all those fearful thoughts are uh, created by you inside yourself. So I kind of stress this idea. I'm I'm not going to read it because that would be boring. So I'm just going to kind of give my own thoughts now, respond to it, uh, see if I change anything, which I don't think I will. But I write that thoughts come from your feeling. And what I meant by this, by feeling, I I just wanted to change the word belief and the word state to feeling. Because I think when you hear, you know, whatsoever you desire, believe you have received and you will. When you think in terms of believing something, it's not really fun. (laughs) It's not. If you're honest with yourself, trying to get yourself to believe something is very stressful. It's tons of effort. It's like, trying to be positive all the time. It sounds, it's a hell in it in itself. Um, it just looks prettier. You think it's going to be nicer, but it's not. It's like living in a beautiful home, but the relationships are awful. <laughs> I'm sure someone's been there before. So when I when I change the word to state and the, the, to feeling and belief to feeling, it makes a little bit more sense that whatever you desire, feel that you have it, then you will. It's just a lot less stressful, and in fact, it's more fun, and it's easier to drop, you know, to drop the uh, the reasoning so much. You go for the feeling of it until you feel the feeling has changed, until you feel that it's done. Um, there's a few ways of going about it, uh, but you always go to the end. You go to already being it. That's what makes it fun. You don't imagine to become it, you know, one day. You imagine already being that. And... Um, you'll find yourself just feeling way more relaxed and having way more fun with this than trying to do a state adding to sleep at night for 10 hours and you're trying to just repeat this thing over and over hoping that you would uh, one day uh, get what you want when you haven't really even given it to yourself yet. You're trying to give it to yourself. You haven't actually given it to yourself. So I basically say that because when you start to actually feel after the things you want and you start to feel that you already are that and you actually feel that to your depths, I don't mean just like a gentle emotion, I mean really feel it, you'll see that from that acceptance, you're going to have new thoughts coming from that feeling and you don't have to stress or worry. You have to just simply feel that you already are that. And um, that can take a skill just because it it forces you the the feeling of already that already feeling forces you to go against your senses and i don't, and i don't want to get into it i was going to get into something else with neville but um i talk about how you don't want to create this idea that it's very difficult to change your feeling forget belief for a second to change your feeling can be so hard you don't want to get yourself mixed in with those ideas that you have all these blockages in you you know, Neville said that, he goes, I'm going to imagine, I'm going to ignore everything. I'm going to ignore the press, ignore the news, ignore everything my senses are telling me and assume that I already am that. And he said, don't tell me it's going to be difficult or else you just put blockages in front of me. So don't believe in difficulty like that. Don't believe that. Um, and if even if you do have blockages in the end of the day, let's say you have all this resistance and blockages, you are the creator of that resistance and that blockage inside yourself. You can't go to another God. You can't go to something outside of you. Not anymore. Not with these teachings. And it's actually what you want in the end. So, for example, though, you know, feeling fearful, is just, it's just going to give birth to fearful thoughts. And whatever you personally find fearful in your own personal inner imagination, the things you find scary are going to appear to you. <laughs> and um, it's because you don't really know who you are yet inside. You don't realize how much, at least you just don't know how powerful you are inside that you're actually the one scaring yourself. It's truly a wonderful feeling when you actually accept that you're scaring yourself and you're causing yourself those um, terrible catastrophes inside yourself, that there is no other creator of those thoughts. Um, 
and I, and I speak about how, you know, if you have this idea that maybe a robber is coming into your home or whatever is coming, you might feel fear at nighttime and you're conjuring all these uh, things. Um, what happens is that when you find yourself in a, in a fearful forest in your mind, you're try, you'll try really hard to control the thoughts and change the thoughts and change the words and change the people and change all these things when you should be focused on changing the feeling. You, you thought of something terrible happening because you're feeling afraid inside yourself. If you don't forget, forget the thoughts for a second. Don't make the robber in your mind like a gentleman. <laughs> change the feeling. Uh, go to change. I mean, I guess you could do that, but change the feeling. Go to feeling. Um, understand that that feeling is being created by you. It's being done to you. You are in some sense fearing yourself. You're creating a, um, you're not being loving towards yourself. You're psyching yourself out instead of being calm and caring towards yourself and being loving towards yourself, being powerful towards yourself. Um, and you can do that when you accept the responsibility of creating those things inside you, that they don't have a different foundation or a different cause than you. Um, there is no other God. That is the point of Neville over and over again. And that is, that's the battle that we deal with is that the moment you come into Neville's work and you believe that God is the imagination, it goes against everything your senses have told you. So that's the battle. And it tells you that God wins in this battle. So the inner man wins. And that, um, that's for another time. But the point is that you can, you can basically realize if you're someone who's been in a, in your imagine, your imagination is a prison or it's something fearful, you can learn to be safe in it. You can have fun with imagination. But in order to have fun, you have to feel safe. But you're allowed to. You don't have to stress so hard about imagining. You don't have to feel that it's such a stress and such a work all the time. It's something you get to do and enjoy. And if you actually believe that imagining creates reality, you can have a lot of fun with it. It's the opposite. It's not scary. You, you It's not about... Um, fighting off fearful thoughts all day long. It's about creating new thoughts. It's about creating new ideas inside you, creating new things and feeling that they already are. You go to the end. You go to the end. Imagine that God only acts when you go to the end. It doesn't Don't meddle in the middle. That's not going to work. You go to already being so. I don't care what the senses tell you. You know, Neville always said, don't tell me, don't tell me what you don't want. Tell me what you want. You know, so many times we can go into our minds and point all the thoughts that we don't want to happen. <laughs> point to this fearful thought and that fearful thought and feel, nope, I don't want this happening. I don't want that happening. I definitely don't want that happening. Instead of going towards what is it that I want, become curious about yourself. What is it that I want? Inside myself, what would I like? And don't be ashamed for wanting it. Imagination doesn't question your right to want it. Don't have to feel any unworthiness about that. Don't feel unworthy about having wants. There are things in you that you uh, want to feel. Don't feel that feeling pleasurable things is going to result in a bad outcome for you. Don't think that happiness is going to eventually become horrible. Um, don't listen to these ideas. They're all superstitions that they tell you. Feel deeply that there is no other God you're going to. When you really start to feel that, imagining becomes more fun because you're going to the one source that is the source of your forgiveness, the source of your love, the source of your joy. It's the source of your freedom that you're seeking. It's not outside of you. Going outward and becoming even more materialistic is not going to make you more free inside. So this whole thing can become fun. It doesn't have to be this... Uh, as Neville says, you don't sit down and burst the blood vessel, pounding out the details of your desire. You can imagine as you walk down the street, a simple assumption is easy and it's lots of fun. So feel. Go for the feeling and then let the thoughts come. Don't force yourself to think. Just start to feel that, what would, as Neville said, what would it feel like if this burden was taken off of me? What would it feel like if I was, as Neville says, free as the wind? What would that feel like if I already was? Not how am I going to figure out how to get free as the wind. What if I already was? How would that feel to me? Don't worry so much about pounding the details about the thoughts of everything or about fixing every single thought that you come into contact with. 
I guess you could, but it's better to go to the feeling and create new ideas, new thoughts in the mind, new tracks that you can jump on. It's much easier, in fact, than to untangle lots of messes. And I'm not saying that it's pointless. I'm just saying that there's the time is now to change inside your mind. Because the present is an everlasting, it, it, the, I mean, sorry, the past is an everlasting present reality to the inner man. The inner man can spark up the past and experience it as if it's happening right now. And so is the future. These things are not, and at one point your future was your past. At one point your future was already set in stone by the self-concept that you presently hold. So the time is now. The time is now to make this easier for yourself to change. And assume that you already are. That's the fun part, in my opinion, is to feel that I already am. Revise something that happened in the day and make it conform to something good. Be have fun with it. Don't worry so much about what's going to happen, how's it going to co- how's it going to come about, and when. Just simply have fun. Practice the principle, as Neville says. It's not about asking if it's right or wrong, or if I'm gonna if I'm doing the right thing, or if I'm doing the wrong thing, or if I'm if I imagine it well enough, or if I did that. It's about do I accept that it's done? That's the question. Do I accept that it's done? And, and if you can answer yes, then you can have a lot of fun with this. Don't, bro- don't blah, burst a blood vessel, as Nella says. I've, I've done that. I've done that so many times where I've just laid down and imagined with all my might, thinking that the more effort I put into my thought or my scene, it's going to come. And every time, and then I would have scenes where I thought about it for a second, and then it happened. I'd think, what the hell? It happens for one second, and then the other 10 hours I put into this other thing, it doesn't happen because we think that we must earn things in the mind. It's not that way for the inner man. The inner man does not have to earn. Get that out of your vocabulary. The inner man does not have to earn anything. To him, time doesn't even exist. Concepts are things that are just clothing that can be put on to the inner man. It's new outfits. You don't have to feel that you have all these blockages because the inner man doesn't have blockages. Everything's under his control inside. Everything. It's all created by him. So responsibility is not something to be afraid of for the inner man. It's something that grants you more power. So the fearful thoughts no longer have this control and they can fall at the wayside and you can start having more fun. Accept that it's done and move on with something else. Accept something else is done for another person. Feel joyful that they have what they want. And don't allow the senses to tell you that they don't. Don't leave them in want. And don't leave yourself in want either. You can have fun. It can be a very, very fun time. Um, So, I I know I kind of went off script when it came to this series. I'm just kind of speaking from my own. It'd be too long to read. But, yeah, I just hope that this kind of relieves some stress that it doesn't have to be, people always ask Neville, you know, did I imagine it? Do you imagine super vividly? And Neville would always say, no. I mean, I would just imagine until either I felt a sense or until I, like a, like an actual one of the five senses in my imagination, or I had a, a an outline or an idea and a, that I accepted as being fact. That was the main part. It's fact. It already is. That's the main part. Because people were so caught up as to how is it that I, um, how to imagine, you know, as vivid as Neville. It's, it's Neville's vividness that gives him what he wants. The same imagination's in you. All Neville did was he wanted to see his, his, his desire. He wanted to see it, so he visualized it. But he had to accept it, that it's his, that it's his now. Because the only time you have is now to change. Now is the best time. And you can make yourself a king in your mind. I, you can... Make yourself entirely different. You don't have to obey the physical. That's the point. In fact, your imagination never really does obey the physical. Um, so I hope that you can have more fun with your, your thinking process and your feeling process instead of feeling that you're stuck, that you can actually accept something that puts a smile on your face deeply in a, in a true Smile, not something that you don't do Do the nice thing just because you think it's a nice thing. Actually do something you want. You'll feel far better off. Actually feel good that you gave yourself what you want and you gave another what they wanted. 
Don't feel like it went to waste or it's not being listened to. For your for the future you're experiencing, or the you know, your past that you once experienced was once an imaginary future. And that at one point was imagined. And that imaginary future, which is now your now your past, that imaginary future has roots in yourself, in your self concept. That's where it comes from. It's spurred, it's sprouted from that. So don't think you're not being listened to. It came from you. And I know that can be hard to swallow. It's easier to live a life blaming, but it's much more fun when you have freedom inside yourself. It's much more fun when you've discovered you don't need anything. Neville said you can use astrology and you can use your teacup leaves if you really need to convince yourself of the truth that you already are the thing you want to be. But why use anything at all, as Neville said? Why use anything? Just use your imagination. Accept it. And to the degree that you think it will come to pass, it will. So truly feel that it's going to come to pass. So, um, yeah, free yourself inside. Don't allow yourself to continue living a life in these lowly ideas of yourself. You're allowed to think highly. You're allowed to feel highly. So I know this will help.